Welcome to another edition of Spotlighting Paradise. I'm your host, Henry White. I have a very special program on tap for you today. My guest is a very good friend of mine who has co-produced a very powerful and compelling documentary called The Throwaways. And I'm going to show you The Throwaways. His name is Ira McKinley. The Throwaways, I'm just going to read a little bit here, is a personal exploration of the devastating impact of police brutality and mass incarceration on the black community told through the eyes of formerly incarcerated activist filmmaker Ira McKinley. With rawness and power, this award-winning documentary film speaks directly to the national movement rising up to fight back against a wave of police killings of black people in America. Now, before I introduce Ira or bring Ira in, I just want to read for you folks uh, a partial review which states, the throwaways courageously explores the most pressing racial justice issue of our time, the mass incarceration and racial profiling of people of color. That's from critically acclaimed author of the book, The New Jim Crow, Michelle Alexander, who's actually featured in this documentary as well. The documentary, The Throwaways, has been also featured on Democracy Now!, where Ira and the co-producers were interviewed by Amy Goodman. So we are delighted and honored to actually have you in the show in the <laughs> studio today. I, I'm honored to be here, man. This is, <laughs> this is where it all started. So, absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah, so how are you feeling? And it, it's good to come back and reminisce and to see the changes that have happened here mm -hmm. and, and, and at NCTV. Um, it's been like I've been away since three years. I think the last time I was here, we were doing um, we were doing filming. We were filming a uh, part, which you will see, which is in the throwaways of uh, the Northampton scene. Mm -hmm. um, so to come back and see how, you know, you guys have progressed, it, it's it's beautiful. It's amazing. It yeah. is. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, yeah. I go around and I've been going around to different uh, cities, as mm -hmm. you know, presenting this, this film. And this is one of the best studios that's around. Right. Everybody right. wants to get like this. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And yeah. Amy Goodman talked about it too, because they started her Democracy Now started through a community television. Wow, I didn't so, know that. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, she she talked about it on the on the uh, the show what we right. did. So. Okay. So we're gonna get into a, a lot about the uh, the contents of this very powerful documentary, uh, but I also want to let the viewers know that you're also here to talk about the screening of this particular documentary, which is going to be at the Academy of Music. And we're going to give you more on the when and where's of that. But let's start out. Why don't you talk about the throwaways and tell the folks out there what the throwaways is all about? Well, the throwaways is a, I would say it's an expression that I felt of when me being homeless and going, when, when I was like, here and in other places, you know, um, the, the feeling of that nobody cared, mm -hmm. that, you know, that they would look at me like, like some, something that they could just throw away and just forget. And uh, so I came up with this and I, <laughs> with this, this scenario and I, I put it, brought it to fruitation because I wanted to show people that I'm not, not a throwaway, you right. know what I'm saying, that I'm, I have value, I have this, I say it in the film. So, you know, it's to show, show people that, you know, that you cannot just misjudge people because that, that, that person that you're, that you're trying to throw away who you, you know, could, might consider a bum might be a concert pianist mm -hmm. who just went down on their luck. So, you know, it's sort of like the soloist, what, what Jamie Goodman, Absolutely. Jamie Foxx played. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know what talent you got out there, but if you just keep, if they're not, if you undervalue it, that's when you know. <laughs> that's when you know. You never know. You never know. You don't, never know. Don't you know, judge a book by its cover, cover, so yeah. to speak. You might have a, a jewel. You know, it might be a diamond in a rough. It just needs to be polished. Absolutely. And, and people tend to 
not do that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, tend to throw, throw people away. So what were your, some of your earlier experiences which uh, influenced you to, to go this route? I mean, you have a very interesting journey. Um, um, well, e even you know. here, even here, I mean, the, the journey of me being homeless and sleeping in the tent when I was here and me um, starting Northampton Community Television when I was sleeping in the tent. And, How uh, did that get started? That's an interesting story. That's why I'm asking uh, you. <laughs> well, I did a project. I mm -hmm. did a project called uh, I Hear Music in the Street, and mm -hmm. it was about homeless people. That's, I think that's what me and you first Absolutely. met. Absolutely. That's uh, the uh, one in at Pulaski Park. Uh, Pulaski Park. Absolutely. That's the very first I did. Okay. And, I, and my, the idea was to use homeless and unemployed people to show the value of them. Mm -hmm. and it's a nice event. Yeah, it was a nice, nice event. But then afterwards, it's like back to normal. Right. So it was like, okay, well, you can't just throw these people, throw this away, you know what I'm saying? So I had to keep on doing things to bring attention to the plight right. of the people who, and we tend to do that. I mean, North, Northampton is a, it's a city where there's a lot of money here, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And, you know, you have Smith College and you have all these boutiques, but then you also have homelessness and buskers. Right. So I wanted to show the goodness of those people that you wanted to take the park benches away from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because right, they have exactly. nowhere else to go. So. That's right. So we did That's been an issue a couple of times, actually, you know, about the park benches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, anyway. they don't want to, yeah, they don't want to, I mean, and, yeah. and what I want, what I seen, when, when I seen mm -hmm. walking through the street was buskers and music mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, everyday people just doing things. And it was something not seen anywhere else. And I was like, why would you want to, you know, criminalize these people who this is their only thing, and they went and got a permit, and they sat out there and sang. So when I hear music in the streets, we did that, and afterwards it was like back to the same old thing. So, you know, I, I, I I'm as an activist, I have a, a tendency to, you know, voice my opinion. Absolutely. And so, you know, I think they want to. That's do, one thing you've never been not accused of is voicing your opinion. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes. So, <laughs> they, they, they gave me a, another project, which was a summer concert series where I brought bands the next summer. And that went good. Yeah, that went good that too. Went good, that absolutely. went good too. Yeah. And then at, around that same time I became producer of the year because at I NCTV. lost TV. Yeah, N C T V because I had lost when when I did the first show, I wanted to document that, the process. Mm -hmm. And I lost control over the whole project. Okay. And people, you know, they didn't do what they was gonna say they were gonna do. Uh, footage was lost. And then right. somebody told me said, hey, listen, if he listen, if you want to document stuff, you need to learn how to film and edit. Okay. Why don't you go up to NCTV? And mm -hmm. I did. And uh, during the time I was homeless and living in the tent. And um, that's where this all started. You know right, what I'm saying? Exactly. And I, you know, took the, uh, the the little program that they make you go through. Yeah, like the production. The production which, class. Yeah, production I took the, courses, uh, I took the yeah, production which course. Which are for folks out who don't know out there, which is just a great plug for. I mean, this is open to the community. Yes. Anybody can come up here and do it, which is um, mm -hmm. definitely an undervalued or, or not known fact about Northampton Community TV. Yes, anybody can come and do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And, and I did it, mm -hmm. and um, I took it. I took it far. You know, I'm just coming in here, and I... And I, um, every weekend I would take the camera out and I would take the whole production That's stuff right. out with me and I would film stuff, you know what I'm saying? And getting better and better at it, being a producer in production. I did a lot of musical stuff around here and mm -hmm. um, a lot of um, social justice stuff, and um, which led me to becoming that first year producer of the year. And um, from there, I just, you know, I just took it off, took off with it, right. you know what I'm saying? And uh, when I left here and I moved back to Albany, uh, I was back in the same situation. Right. Where people were not, you know, giving me, you know, I couldn't find a job, I couldn't do this, so I went, I went right you, back. Were you feeling like a throwaway? Or, well, or, yeah, right. and then, but I was getting mad, too. It was like, mm -hmm. how dare you? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? After all I've been through, telling me that I need to be reskilled. You know what I'm saying? Here I am, a veteran. I was in the Air Force. Okay. And I, I, I just became producer of the year, but that was undervalued to you. You right. telling me I'm, you want me to go work at a motel for for uh, three hundred fifty dollars a month and food stamps? You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Because I didn't have job training, and that pissed me off. Right. I was like, you know what? I got something for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make this movie and talk about what the problem is in in, in society. You know what I'm saying? You know, all these people are are getting paid to do certain things. You know what I'm saying? To keep people down, and right. then you want them to work for free. 
So mm -hmm. you telling me I need to be retrained? So I go work in your hotel for free. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, you know, it doesn't make any doesn't sense. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense to me. So you have, you do have a a strong pedig pedigree in social activism and and social justice and change. Matter of fact, while you were here, you started social change in mind. Am I yes. correct? Yes. Yes. And you were doing because I want to stay here for a second. Mm -hmm. um, you started some activists protesting uh, initiatives here or collaborated. I, if I can remember, I know there was the bid mm -hmm. uh, where there was this initiative going on through the city of Northampton to mm -hmm. for businesses to opt in mm -hmm. to this bid. And I can recall actually attending a meeting with you with some students from Hampshire College mm -hmm. and you right away you, you were a leader in that particular initiative. And I'm, I'm just wondering, so with that particular part of the, the journey, what, you, what you've been doing, talk about the process. Because from there, I think, and people will see some of the footage in there, there was some, some footage of you being in New York doing the- um, Occupy Wall Street. The Occupy Wall Street movement. See, mm -hmm. I'm, from my perspective, I'm sort of trying to connect the dots here. Uh -huh. So I want you to talk about how all of that relates to uh, well, yes, we when I was here, um, my activism really, really did start here. But I was more active. I was always I've been an activist. Absolutely. But um, we did yeah, the bid, and how did that work out? I guess they <laughs> they found something wrong with it anyway. Eventually, and, uh, it, it and then became, they threw it out. But we yeah, it was we, illegal from what yeah, the judge it was said. illegal. Yeah, right. it was illegal, and for all those years. But you know, I can't complain because the bid helped me. With some of the concerts, you know, Absolutely. I ran out of money. That I went to them, and they they gave and me they some money to help me out to, to do some stuff. So it was good and bad. Mm -hmm. But when we, um, you know, we, I started with pro uh, um, poverty is not a crime. Absolutely, that was PNAC right. that we we formed a group, and we were talking about these issues, and it was like it was that issue, the bid issue, and then I think before that they wanted to try to stop. Um, Solicitation of, of of homeless or or what was it like panhandling? Panhandling, it absolutely. Was a panhandling Which is thing. a another issue across the country, not yes. just to Northampton, but yes. I know Holyoke and I think Worcester and all of them are kind of dealing with that same yes. issue. And this was during the time when when Obama first got started, and you know the, the crash was coming down and things was happening. There was a housing shortage and all this other stuff, and we were like, well. How are you going to say, you know, there's no jobs? Well, how are you going to tell a brother, can you spare a dime? So you're saying to them they mm. can't say that because it might take away from somebody that might want to come into your business or something like that. But there was people, like, out here that was in need of, of, of services that you didn't have. And, and so we started PNAC, and we, uh, we, we used that, and we um, came together, and we did some demonstrations. Um, um, we... Um, from there, we went. We moved on to um, well, well, basically, we be doing. I'm also a business, uh, a showman. So, um, to me, the the good that was to help me motivate to get the projects in, in Pulaski Park. So, right. so me saying, okay, well, look at this. Well, I I think I have an idea that will help the situation, and let's do. Um, I hear music in the streets, and then next year the summer concert series. Right. So that helped me, 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 and, and I shouldn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Why do I have to uh, go out here and raise, you know, raise hell for you to notice me for something that, you know, for a project that's going to benefit everybody? Right. And that's what the Pulaski Park projects did when we did right. those, those projects right out there. It, it, it brought people together. You right. know what I'm saying? And we did that. Then we did the reggae, reggae festival. Absolutely. And then fashion the, show, the fashion the shows, show. all this stuff. So. Yeah. It was a very, it, it was, was a good community event. Yes. It was very well attended and yes. very well received. Yes. And um, we helped people who wouldn't have been seen before, you know, to get them noticed. And, right. And put them in some, some beautiful clothes. That one, that one time we had to get that, we got the hairs done, you know, and we just, you know, we brought everybody together. Right. So, okay. Now, from that, when you went to Albany, and you started seeing a lot more. And actually, there was a lot of things happening across the country, yeah. uh, ironically or unfortunately, at the same time, as far as uh, these, um, I guess there was more 
of a, a, a visible presence uh, mm -hmm. around police brutality um, and mm -hmm. black men, young black men getting killed by the police. And you have been directly involved in documenting and highlighting some of this, especially right there in, in the Albany area. Yes. Um, the, um, yeah, during, and, and it's, it's funny, you know, because we started this project in 2011, I think, in, in the beginning of 2011. Um, and what you had happen that year was Occupy movement started, mm -hmm. but we were already in, involved in doing the throwaway, so we followed that, and then we started to Occupy Albany. Right. Uh, so we, um, you know, we have first hands in becoming activists and getting good footage of it. But what we did was like we were going to do an Occupy movie, but then everybody was doing Occupy movies, and we we're like, you know what? There's a bigger problem going on here with mm -hmm. police brutality, so let's show that. And so then we went to Ithaca. And uh, it was a case there where a, a person I knew just got shot and killed by right. the police. And then is that uh, is that where that scene, which is an extremely powerful scene, and and where there was a community meeting and folks were angered or so that angry. was Albany. Okay, that was, that Albany. was Albany, and it went right along with what we were trying to say. Um, and then um, and then you had the three young men getting shot and killed in New York City. All what happened in one, within a week. And so we were there to document that mm -hmm. and, the, and the, um, the, the demonstrations that happened with that. And then, and this is way before this Eric Garner and the Ferguson and right. all these other things. So we right. actually wrapped up shooting around the same, that time. And, okay. uh, and, that's, and this was 20, I think it was 2012 or 2013. 2013, we, we wrapped it up. Um, and this is, and then that summer, which was next summer, right? We started doing the film festival stuff. So, okay. so from when we wrapped up, which was in August or of 2013, and you know, doing our, our rough cuts and our final right, cuts, right? We started going into film festivals. Wow. And so since then, we've been into 12 film festivals. We won two. One was Long Beach. Right. And we were Show that again. Long Beach Film Festival. That's Fest right. Okay. Film festival, you which won is that. A, That's we won that. Okay. And we did one in Harlem. So we won an award in Harlem for, for best documentary uh, right. in, in Harlem. So um, that's, that's big. two. Yeah, yeah that's, that's big. It, yes. it was, it's big. Um, both of them. So what we do, what we get from Har uh, the, the week's run in Long Beach is a week's run at a theater. So they're going to send us flyers back out there. Wow. And we get to do uh, like a, a, a like week's a, run. And they're going to have us in variety in um, L.A. Times and all this other really? stuff. Really? Yeah. So. Right. Is that like a red carpet affair kind of thing too? Well, yeah, we're going to try really? to get some, we're going to try to get some, 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 some major fanfare? people there. Yeah. I'm going to try nice. to get, you know, I mean, Bill Duke, and I don't know if you guys know who Bill Duke is, but he's mm -hmm. a great producer, director. Mm -hmm. He was in Car Wash. He did, mm -hmm. um, he did some, some other stuff. Yeah, he, he's he old just, school. He's old school. Absolutely. Yeah. He's yeah. old school and he yeah. does directing and producing right, too. Okay. But he, 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 he seen it. He loved it. Our executive producer on this film is Sam Pollard who right. did all Spike Lee stuff. Absolutely. And he did, he yeah. from Jungle Fever, you know, he was an editor on, uh, on the stuff that Spike Lee did from Jungle Fever to Bamboozled to Four Little Girls. And he co-produced Eyes on the Prize wow. for, for PBS. He just okay. did Slavery by Another Name. And he just did August Wilson, the right. playwright right. for PBS. So you got on. some big, some, 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 yeah, some yeah, heavyweights yeah. on this. He, I mean, he, we showed him. We showed him the film, and he was like. And he was blown you know, away. He was blown away. And yeah. he says, you know what? This is timely film right. because of the incidents that's going on right. in the country. Right, which I can assure the folks out there that you're going to feel and it be impacted the same exact way. I know I was, and we're gonna show you the trailer at some point, and we encourage you to look at the trailer, but once you see this, you're gonna say, wow. So speaking of producers, though, I wanna give a shout out to your other, your co-producers, okay. Bowen, who I met uh -huh. uh, when he was in Northampton with you uh -huh. probably a year and a half ago or so, and then the other brother, Messiah. Yes. And uh, so you guys have been working yeah, it's been a long tirelessly. Yeah, it's been a long <laughs> journey, and, and both of them, like and Messiah, he he just um, he was working with Democracy Now, so he was oh, doing okay. filming with them. He was an intern, right? And he got uh, got a spot on there for like a year and a half, right? For working with Democracy Now, and Bowman, he does youth effects, so he teaches the youth how to shoot film. So 
Yeah, wow. and we, uh, yeah, they, they, we worked tirelessly on this, and him and Adele Baum, and there's another guy named Jay Wilcox, but a lot of people had a hand in making this happen. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And I uh, mentioned at the beginning that you have uh, Michelle Alexander, mm -hmm. um, it's quoted in this film and featured in this film, but you also have Van Jones. Van Jones. Who, uh, who um, I believe is an envir environmentalist now. Yes. It has his own sort of green initiative stuff going yes. on. Yes. But he talks about the throwaways in the film. Mm -hmm. um, and Global Citizen, the website Global Citizen, has uh, ranked you as one of the top five black activists that people should know. And that's big. Yeah. So yeah, congratulations was, on that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, was, it was us, Black Lives Matter, Michelle. Michelle's Michelle on that Lives, list. Right, exactly. They're jealous, and, and, and there's another gentleman. Right. So, uh, yeah, we did a show. We, were, we went to Berkeley in Oakland, and we had a big response. Right. The University of Berkeley, man, we had about 700 people show up to wow. the panel. So, and we yeah. did two screenings, and yeah. it was amazing. Right. And we had uh, one of the students, the black, one of the black youth students, mm -hmm. come on with us, and um, <clears throat> that was part of the Black Lives Matter there in Berkeley. Right. And he came up and uh, spoke with us, because they had just painted, I guess, the football field. Right, that's the, right. The, the center yeah. of it, they painted yeah. it red, black, and green. Right, right. Yeah, just to show, yeah, you know, this matters for right, us. Right, absolutely. You know, so, so, yeah. And so we had him, I think we felt that was Because they had courageous. their own little... Yes. Racial incidents is there as well, yes, right yes. there, not just recently, not too long yeah, ago. Yeah, not too long ago. Yeah, and then so we went to local. Oakland, and right. we had Elaine Brown, and Elaine Brown was the first female leader of the Black Panthers. Right, okay. So she was on a panel with us with Uncle Bobby Cephas, who was Oscar Grant. Remember Fruitvale Absolutely. Station? Yes. His uncle came, and we was a whole big panelist of people. Right. Uh, we had Davy D on there, Jaziri X, okay. who was helping us, who was a hip-hop social activist. Right. Right. He just received a $100,000 grant to go out and do art and activism, too. Right. So we're connecting with these people. Absolutely. Michelle really helped us with this Oh, film. she's, yeah. Well, I mean, I sent this out to her, like, when we first started. Right. And she was like, give me the, uh, she said, give me the proposal. Let me see it. Right. And then she, she yeah. made herself available for us for when we shot and all that. Right. And I cold called her. I don't blame you. I, well, just, yeah, called, well, I just called her. That I, doesn't surprise I, me because that's the type of guy you yeah, are yeah. anyway. <laughs> I, call, I called <laughs> a wild you? state to call her office just to see if I was going to be. So right. she answers the phone and I'm like, okay, what am I going to say now? Right. I'm, I'm, exactly. like, you know, I'm like, you know what? That, that book you did. It's awesome. The New and Jim Crow. New I mean, Jim it's Crow. really, it's a powerful book. I'm sure people, the folks out there know about that book. Yes. But, um, and she talks really about the mass incarceration of uh, black men and how it's, you know, it's a new form of slavery, Liberty. basically. Yes, yes, yes. So with that, I think that's enough, should be enough information for you folks out there to, it has piqued your interest enough for you to check the trailer out, but also we are screening this. We are lucky to have this being screened right here in Northampton, our very own Ira McKinley coming back home. Yes. Not, not just the Northampton Community TV here, but we're gonna be at the Academy of Music. Yes. Along with the other producers. Yes. And um, it is, the date is? April 23rd at 7 p.m. at the Academy of Music. We will be there partnering with uh, Northampton Community Absolutely. Television. Absolutely. We're proud to be sponsoring yes. it here. Yes, and hopefully we could do more. Um, like when I was telling you about doing concerts, one of the things I want to do is to give back to the, uh, the cities and communities mm -hmm. by doing concerts and giving money back into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And I feel like that's how we can build morale up. You Absolutely. Know what I'm Help well, music up. is always a good thing. Yeah, and music yes. brings people together for sure. Now, on April 23rd, um, the other folks that I know um, has signed on board as sponsorship is Smith College as well. And I think there's a few more that that's just, um, I'm sure they're ringing the phones here now trying to be involved, or I'm actually hoping they are. Um, so April 23rd, folks, at the Academy of Music, um, I'm going to give away a few tickets to this. So um, my email address is spotlightingparadise at gmail.com. For the first five folks who email me and and show an interest or, or ask me for tickets to this event, uh, you've got them. And um, mm -hmm. so, Ira, mm -hmm. 
you're doing a, a wonderful job, man. I'm real proud of you. Man. You know and what? I'm, I'm I'm proud to come back here. You like I said, I'm glad that you from this guy. I got told him I said <laughs> you got to come to NCTV. Absolutely. And now he he's he's the man here. You know well, what I'm saying? For the folks out here who don't know, haven't really heard my story, I've shared it a couple of times, but Ira has, it is the one who encouraged me to get involved with Northampton Community TV and to be become a producer and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, that it is it's wonderful. It's, yeah, it's great to see you doing your thing, and it's good that, um, and again, a shout out to NCTV and all that they do here. Um, I'm going to start wrapping up. But before I do, I do want to, again, say thank you to Northampton Community TV, all of the staff and volunteers, the interns, um, because we can't do this show without you, and you guys rock. Um, also, just real quick, for the folks out there, Al, the director of NCTV, is actually featured in, in this documentary as well. So it's, you know, it's global, but it also yes. has the local uh, affiliation on many levels. Um, what's your website? www.throwawaysmovie.com. And we, yes, we have been going to a lot of places showing it. So Northampton is going with us every place we went from Florida to uh, West Coast. We've been to up there of Oregon and Washington and California, right. Denver, Utah. Wow, that guy's and, been all over. Yeah, we've been all yeah. over with this. Even Toronto, we did some stuff in wow, Canada. Wow, that's so. beautiful city. We, yeah, with the kids. I mean, <laughs> we, they brought they brought a whole hundred kids to see the movie. Oh, really? Yeah, from the yeah from nice. the high school. And I did nice. a Skype. I skyped yeah. in to have a Q wow, and A with them. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So when you reach that, when it, when you do that, that that makes you feel good about the project that you presented. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And Absolutely. Uh, hopefully this would become obsolete because we could talk about the police brutality and the mass incarceration. Absolutely, and, and eradicate a, it. Have solutions. Right, absolutely. And that's what we want to do with the Q&A. We want to talk about solutions. That's right. And it's important to keep that conversation going because we, we didn't, we, I think we might have to have you back here so mm -hmm. that we can go into another aspect of mm -hmm. um, the, the, the real, what I call a real problem and, and everybody's talking about it, which is the police, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Brutality, uh, yeah, especially cool. of men, men like myself yeah, that look men like of us. Color. Yes, men of color. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, yes. It's it's real. It's yes. definitely real. Um, and um, you know, they're starting. There's the people are talking now. Yes, I yes. mean, thank goodness for social media. Thank goodness for yes. video cameras. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I've, you know, I've been a strong component of it. And you see, I'm like, but in the public space, I'm going to film you. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I, especially if I see yeah. you doing something that you that's ain't supposed right. to be doing. That's right. And that's that's what needs to be done. And, and everybody has a camera now on their phones or whatever. That's right. So there's no reason for you not to if you see something. Right. That you, and people don't know their rights and their laws. Yes. But, I mean, and it's not immune. It's not just everywhere else. In Northampton, it's not immune to it either because yes. they had an issue here maybe a year and a half, maybe two years ago, outside one of the bars, uh -huh. so it's a similar type situation. And thank goodness that was caught on camera. Yeah. You yeah. know, so uh. it's, it's, it's a real issue, and I think we need to, to discuss it more. It's actually one of my pet peeves in terms of black images in the media and so on and so forth. So, um, but anyway, again, folks, come out April 23rd, the Academy of Music. Um, I'm going to give you again my email address, which is spotlightingparadise at gmail.com. Please send me your, your comments, uh, views, and opinions, and any show ideas. I really appreciate them. I'm going to leave you with this. It's a quote. I'm a fighter. I believe in the eye for an eye business. I'm no cheek turner. I got no respect for a man who won't hit back. You kill my dog, you better hide your cat. That's from the great, actually the greatest, <laughs> Muhammad Ali. Until next time on Spotlighting Paradise, peace and blessings, and keep the faith.